In the virtual reality educational projects that are run by the 4D Research Lab, we make use of a VR platform called Mozilla Hubs. In this video, I'm going to introduce you, the student or the educator, into the usage of this virtual reality uh, environment. So what is it? Uh, Mozilla Hubs uh, is a virtual collaborative platform that runs in your browser. That means everyone with an internet connection and a browser can access Mozilla Hubs. Um, it's collaborative, that means that you can get together in the same virtual environment with a larger group of people, a class for instance, uh, and talk to each other, uh, discuss any kind of topics, talk about the things that you see there, but also insert your own data or information in it, such as uh, videos or uh, 3D models or images. So many of the VR environments that we use for education are collected here on this uh, central place, this uh, website, Virtual Past Places. You can exit it at virtualpastplaces.eu. And there, there are various um, VR environments that are used for different educational projects. Uh, you can uh, click on this and I'm going to introduce you to the use of this, uh, of this platform by just entering one of those that are already uh, accessible. So this is a VR environment that we created for the Allard Pearson. It's a virtual uh, exhibition about disability and sickness in antiquity. So when you enter a Mozilla Hubs virtual environment, it usually takes a while depending on the speed of your internet connection, but also on the size of the models or the VR environment in general. What, um, so it can take a few seconds to sometimes uh, even up to a minute or longer to load. So when uh, the environment is loaded you get this uh, option of choosing to join the room or just to spectate um, so we click on join the room and this is the point that you can change your name and also your avatar your avatar is your virtual representation in this world so here uh, if you click here you can choose from a selection of avatars available um, we intend to make also more realist realistic avatars uh, available uh, to you instead of all these cartoony ones. But these are the default ones that come with uh, Mozilla Hubs. As soon as you click accept, uh, there's a couple of uh, pop-up screens that's, uh, or pop -ups that show up. So you have to give it access to your uh, audio device, your microphone if you want to talk to other people. So you said, uh, should say allow. Um, yeah, well here you can also set your uh, audio device, your speakers and your microphone, make sure that it's set correctly. And then you can enter the room. So as soon as you, as you have entered the room, the first time that you enter, to enter it, you get a, uh, yeah, a tour uh, to get you uh, comfortable with the controls. So I'm going to run through those as well. Um, so the way that you move around in Mozilla Hubs is with the arrows or which is generally easier is with the WASD keys on your keyboard. Why is that easier? Because usually on your right hand, you're holding your mouse. Uh, so you, uh, uh, with your left hand on the left side of your keyboard, you can use the WASD keys. But of course, if you prefer to use the arrows because they make more sense to you, you can use the arrows on your keyboard. With the Q and E keys on your keyboard, you basically look around, change the direction that you're facing. But it's recommendable uh, and more easily to use your mouse for this. So how do you do this? Um, you click anywhere in the screen with your left mouse button and then start dragging around. If you release your left mouse button, you stop looking around. So this is basically how you navigate uh, Mozilla Hubs and you can now uh, walk around any of the worlds that we created. 
there are some additional controls uh, for the navigation that makes it uh, easier or faster uh, to to uh, move through these virtual environments so one of those is right mouse button with your right mouse button you can transport quickly skip to another position so when you hold the right mouse button you see this arch and this uh, circle and that means that uh, you will be moved to that location so when i release the mouse button i'm quickly transported to that location uh, what else you can also run instead of walking so your basic moving speed uh, is walking however when i'm holding shift at the same time as holding my w or forward key i'm moving twice as fast and then there is one other very nice feature and that is that you can also fly around However, I have to move over to another VR because flying is disabled in uh, this specific one. Yeah, so we're now in Amsterdam uh, 1625 um, to demonstrate the flying. Uh, to activate flying, you hit G once on your keyboard. Uh, and now you can basically cross everything. So for instance, this water that would not be uh, possible without flying mode enabled. You can also um, yeah, go higher into the sky by just facing upward and you don't see much, but actually we're moving upwards. In order to see uh, how high you are, you can better uh, do it reverse. So look down and then use your backward moving key so the S or the down arrow to, uh, to fly to a higher altitude. So also here you can hold shift to move faster. And as soon as you uh, hit the G button again uh, to dis deactivate flying, you're, uh, you're falling down on that uh, position so I'm now on this stack of wood so back um, in the Roman alley um, what else can you do in this virtual environment so often when we created these environments we put in all kinds of uh, extra elements objects uh, sound um, text uh, all these kind of things that are added to the environment in this way are also enlargeable or clickable so you can focus on them so it may be a little bit difficult to read this text so uh, this is a clickable item you uh, can right click it and then it kind of puts the focus on that and then you can also use your scroll wheel on your mouse to uh, enlarge this um, and that works the same with uh, yeah with images such as this one you can study it in detail and also with 3d models like this one oh in this case it's not enabled sometimes it's also possible with certain 3d models that are placed in this environment um, audio fragments uh, are, uh, you can recognize them like this one uh, when you hover over them you get a play button Dof stomme prints op deze Griekse fase is Koning Kruiser. And then you get the audio fragment. The same way you uh, activate uh, video uh, fragments. Sometimes they are automatically played whenever you are near to them, uh, but sometimes you have to activate them yourself. One last thing, uh, one setting that I recommend turning on is shadows. So as you see here, there, is no, uh, there are no shadows cast by these buildings uh, that's a setting that is turned off by default unfortunately because a lot of these rooms are created with the intent of having the shadow effect so to increase the sense of realism you should turn on the shadows yourself so that is a setting that is accessible here at uh, these three dots more and then go to preferences and then you have these tabs with a lot of settings but you can also go to MISC and then scroll down, enable real-time shadows. It's very unfortunate that it works like this. 
and that we cannot have it turned on by default and that users have to do this themselves but as you can see now uh, shadows are cast on the street by these buildings and shadows are also on the interiors of buildings um, so shadow computation takes a little bit more of your computer so if you have a slow computer then it may be recommendable to uh, keep them off so this was it a general introduction to navigation and some other features in mozilla hubs so enjoy your virtual classes